Hey friends, welcome to 4-Minute Answers. Now I've been there, and maybe you are there too. When I was first introduced to Notion, I learned how to set up databases. And so I set up databases for all sorts of things, meal planning and shopping lists and habit trackers and reading lists. Uh, I, I learned how to relate one database to another, and so I made a bunch of changes. And then I learned how to manage projects in Notion and create tasks and subtasks and create timelines. Then I kept adding things that I wanted to keep track of, so I'd add another database and relate it to other databases. Boy, content calendars, ideas to remember, home buying references, CRM, finances, it just goes on and on. And then I went on vacation. And when I came back, I was overwhelmed with what I had created. And instead of digging in and trying to catch up, I just didn't. And my world didn't fall apart, even if I was somewhat less productive. I had created Notion in a way that I served it instead of it served me. And when that happens with any system, it will ultimately fail. Let me say that this isn't Notion's fault. Notion is an awesome tool for simple uses as well as for complex uses. The problem is that because Notion is so flexible, it is easy to create a complicated process when a simple one is all that is needed. So if this is you, if you've invested time in learning Notion and created a system that ultimately is too complicated, don't lose heart. Just pick a few simple things to use Notion for, to get back into the habit, and then, given your knowledge, you can over time rebuild a Notion system that works for you instead of the other way around. Can I suggest that for a time you use Notion for only two or three purposes, to get your Notion mojo back, and to remind yourself of its power, flexibility, and usefulness. First, create an ideas database. It's just a place to drop ideas about anything. Don't overthink it. You don't need to create subcategories yet. Just have a place to drop an idea and some details and the date. Later, you may come back to this and add a column with a multi-select property type and have categories like work or side hustle or personal. But just for now, just the idea, details, and date is a good place to start. So that's the first database. The second database in your new simple approach is to create a simple task list. It doesn't need to be complicated. It doesn't need to relate to any other database. Just a task list. The item, today's date or the date that you added it, the due date, a checkbox to tick when it's completed, and any details that you want to have. That's it. A simple task list. If you can keep track of ideas and keep track of tasks you're 80% there. These two databases are, for most people, the two most critical ones to have. So start here and at least for a while, ignore all your other Notion structure. Just start here and before you know it, you'll be back in the Notion game. And more importantly, you will be able to build on it from here in a way that is only as complicated as it needs to be to work best for you. Do you need to review how to build a database or how to manage property types or how to relate to databases or how to filter the databases so that completed items get hidden? Well, we have those videos and we'll link to those videos in the description below. In the meantime, if you're feeling lost in your Notion, the answer isn't to turn to another productivity system. It's to use Notion's power to create a simpler system, to use it regularly and then build on it from there. If you've enjoyed this video or others from 4-Minute Answers, please subscribe, share, and comment. And if you have ideas or suggestions for other videos, drop a comment below and we'll try to make it happen. Thanks, and we'll see you soon.